Welcome to another episode of Let Review. It's time to exercise your brain cells again. This is a question and answer format, then an explanation will be provided right away. Are you ready? Okay, let's start. Just choose the correct option and be mindful of the time. What is the final electron acceptor in the electron transport chain during cellular respiration? A. Oxygen B. NADH plus C. FADH2 D. Hydrogen Time is up. The answer is A. Oxygen. Oxygen serves as the final electron acceptor for the electron transport chain. Electrons pass through several different proteins to generate the proton gradient in the intermembrane space of mitochondria. Upon reaching the final protein, the electron is bonded to an oxygen molecule to create water. Without oxygen, there would be nowhere for the electrons to go after being pumped through the electron transport chain, and aerobic cellular respiration would be impossible. Meanwhile, NADH and FADH2 molecules are high-energy electron carrier, generated in glycolysis and Krebs cycle. These molecules donate electrons to the electron transport chain, which are then used to pump protons into the intermembrane space of the mitochondrion. On the other hand, hydrogen atoms will create a concentration gradient in electron transport chain. The movement of hydrogens back into the matrix will provide the energy needed by ATP synthase to produce ATP. What blood type is possible for a child to have if a mother has type A blood and a father has type B blood? A. Type A and B only. B. Type A, B and A, B only. C. Type A, B, A, B and O. D. Type A, B and O only. Time is up. The answer is C. Type A, B, A, B, and O. In humans, blood type is determined by three alleles, A, B, and O. Both the A and B alleles are dominant to the O allele. Since the mother's blood type is A, her possible genotypes for blood are AO and AA, while the father's are BO and BB. So, when the mother's A, all L combines with the father's O, all L, the child's blood type will be type A, as A, all L is dominant to O, all L. And when the mother's O, all L combines with the father's B, all L, the child's blood type will be type B, as B, all L is dominant to O, all L. If A, combines with B, the resulting blood type will be type AB, since A and B are both dominant. This is called codominance. And when O, all L, combines with another O, the resulting blood type will be type O. For the recessive all L to be expressed, it has to be homozygous. With these combinations of the mother's allele with the father's allele, we could say that the child's possible blood type will be type A, B, A, B, and O. To calculate the probability or percentages of these blood types, you can use the Punnett square. This will determine which blood type will most likely manifest on the child. Blank is released in response to low blood calcium levels, while blank is released in response to high blood calcium levels. A. Insulin, glucagon. B. Parathyroid, calcitonin. C. Calcitonin, parathyroid. D. Glucagon, insulin. Time is up. The answer is B. Parathyroid, calcitonin. The secretion of both calcitonin and parathyroid hormone play a key role in the regulation of calcium levels in the blood. When levels of calcium in the blood decrease, parathyroid hormone is secreted in higher quantities. On the other hand, when levels of calcium in the blood increase, this causes the amount of calcitonin secreted to increase too. Calcitonin, synthesized and secreted by C cells in the thyroid gland, lowers the concentration of calcium in the blood when it rises above the normal value. On the other hand, parathyroid hormone, secreted from four parathyroid glands, 
regulates calcium levels in the blood by increasing the levels when they are too low. Meanwhile, insulin and glucagon has nothing to do with the secretion of calcium in the body. Insulin is produced in response to increased blood glucose level, while glucagon is produced when blood glucose level is low. The monomers of all biological macromolecules are combined by which type of bond? A. Ionic bond. B. Hydrogen bond. C. Covalent bond. D. Glycosidic bond. Time is up. The answer is C. Covalent bond. A covalent bond involves electrons being shared between atoms. These electrons are shared between two nonmetals. Biological macromolecules, such as proteins, carbohydrates, nucleic acids, and lipids, are made up of single units known as monomers that are joined by covalent bonds to form larger polymers. Protein monomers are amino acids, nucleic acid monomers are nucleotides, polysaccharide monomers are monosaccharides. In order to form polymers, monomers must form covalent bonds with one another. Meanwhile, an ionic bond is a type of chemical bond formed through an electrostatic attraction between two oppositely charged ions. It occurs when a nonmetal and a metal exchange electrons. On the other hand, a hydrogen bond is formed when a hydrogen atom that is covalently bonded to a small, highly electronegative atom is attracted to a lone pair of electrons on an atom in a neighboring molecule. Hydrogen bonding occurs only in molecules where hydrogen is covalently bonded to one of three elements, fluorine, oxygen, or nitrogen. What are the resulting cells of meiosis 1? A. Four haploid cells. B. Two diploid cells. C. Four diploid cells. D. Two haploid cells. The correct answer is D. Two haploid cells. Meiosis I results in two daughter cells, each of which contains a set of fused sister chromatids. Following segregation of homologous chromosome pairs, or tetrads, the two resulting daughter cells have half the number of chromosomes as the parent cell. These chromosomes have two sister chromatids per chromosome, which are non identical due to crossing over. Meanwhile, meiosis II results in four haploid daughter cells, each with the same number of chromosomes. On the other hand, mitosis creates two diploid cells, or identical daughter cells that each contain the same number of chromosomes as their parent cell. That's all for now. Thank you for watching. Happy learning!